Hello and welcome. This week it's another mega Comparo on the Autocar Show. And we've got not one, not two, not three. We have eight MPVs in the fray today. And the reason for this mega Comparo, Renault's new entrant, the Logi. So there you have them, the eight people movers that have to tackle the urban grind and the long roads that lead from it. From the XL-sized Aria to the tightly packaged Ertiga. From the industrious Ivalia to the more urbane Mobilio. The purposeful Enjoy and Xylo to the premium Innova. And the MPV that's mixing it all up, Renault's Logi. Premium features, city-friendly dimensions, highway ability and a long list of features. The Logi is promising a lot. But can it come out ahead? Well, it's a big battle. And when we began the comparisons, we realized that right away some of the contenders were a bit outclassed. The cheapest MPV here is Chevrolet's Enjoy. And its biggest strength is its price. It has a surprising amount of space, but it is a bit too simple in its engineering. And the design is not appealing enough for the modern family. Mahindra Zylo has the best third row of all the contenders and it has great seats and a strong engine. But the overdone design, the dowdy plastics and a lack of luggage space let it down. Also, people movers have to have good highway manners and the Zylo lacks solely in that department. Nissan's Ivalia on the other hand offers loads of space but it does so in a rather utilitarian manner. The interiors are basic at best. The rear window openings are tiny and the upright seating is not conducive to long journeys. Moreover, after paying over 11 lakh rupees, because of the way it looks, anyone driving it around would feel like the delivery boy for DHL. Tata's Aria is an MPV that we rate very highly. It has immense presence, is a fantastic highway machine and sure, it isn't cheap but it is good value. However, it is quite large and cumbersome for everyday use in the city. Also, it isn't as spacious as its size suggests and the quality is disappointing in many places. Which leaves us with our top four. The segment leader, the Innova, Renault's new entrant, the Logi, Honda's Mobilio and Maruti's Ertiga. While Renault car took to the wheel, I got into the second row and we got busy scrutinizing the top contenders. Here's what we felt about each one of them. First off was the stalwart, the Toyota Innova. Karthik, you're enjoying this being driven around today, I gather. Absolutely. But first off, uh, in the Innova, what I'm noticing is the steering is much heavier. Nipping in and out of traffic isn't as easy as it is in the other cars. It's not as nimble or as agile. and. Parking is definitely going to be much more of a pain in the Innova. The Innova's 2.5-litre engine is the largest here, but it's the slowest in terms of 0 to 60 or in-gear accelerations. However, there is one big plus point. The Innova's engine has this really linear acceleration. I think if I were to put it on a graph, it would look like one flat line going up. And that's really nice actually in the city because I'm finding that I don't have to work the gears much and it still gets a move on. I think that's been one of the surprises of the Innova always, right? It's meant to be this big MPV for the highways, but it's really so civil yeah. in, in the city. But the problem really arises when you want to make a quick overtake manoeuvre, you want to get into that traffic gap, you mash your foot down, and then the Innova does feel heavy. It doesn't feel quick enough. It won't get a move on really fast. So in that sense, it does have its downfalls. And, and I think the biggest one for me though is that it doesn't have a sixth gear because when you're sitting on the at about 80 kilometers an hour on the highway, that's its sweet spot. Anything faster than that and the engine just feels so audible inside the cabin. It's exactly that. I'm, I'm constantly searching for another gear. It feels stretched, it feels strained, although it really isn't. And out on the highway, top end is also not really the Zenova strength. I mean, it will cruise comfortably, but it takes its time getting there. There is a lot of vibration that comes in from the steering and gear lever as well. And the engine feels a bit dated in this battle. But those are worries for the person behind the wheel. People movers are more about the passengers. 
you seem to be really chilling at the back of this car and enjoying that experience. I mean, Innova has been one of my favorite long distance vehicles forever, it seems like, you know, because it has that sense of space. It just feels like such a relaxing space. And I think especially the captain seat version that we have at the moment, it just gives you even more that feeling of actually really being just that, the captain of the car, the captain of the road. There is a reasonable amount of space available in all three rows on this captain seat equipped Innova. But if you want a lot of legroom in the middle row, it's best that the third row is not in use. The seats themselves are very comfortable. But one thing that's a bit of an issue in the Innova is now this is the only body on frame car that we have here on this uh, comparison and that it feels a bit top heavy so where even when you're going over fairly smooth tarmac you do feel a slight body movement happening and over rougher stuff it is far more apparent. The other cars Monaco construction feel a lot more controlled. Yeah but Kartik in saying that you know over the rougher stuff I have to say that the Innova does a great job of actually blunting out potholes, you know, it just sort of decimates them when you go over them. You don't feel them as much as you feel them in the other cars and I think in that sense, uh, Yeah, I can see that. Really when, when I see a big pothole, I expect you to slow down, but in the Innova, you can just steamroll it. Absolutely, and you don't rattle the passengers even when you do that. I think that is the advantage of the Innova. The flag bearer of the modern MPV, Honda's Mobilio changes the experience dramatically. Built around the Amaze platform, the Mobilio shares a lot with the sedan, including the 1.5-litre ID.Tech engine, which comes mated to the 5-speed manual. I think the Mobilio's engine does pretty well, you know, in city conditions. It's not too bad. The lag is not as bad or as pronounced as that of the Ortega. If you put your foot down, you do get a move on pretty reasonably quickly. Right. There is a small hint of lag, but it's negligible and the car feels drivable and quite easy in city You condition. said car, you said car. That's just it, Karthik. It just feels so much like a car. I keep forgetting that I'm in an MPV. But while the Mobilio may score in performance, it does lose out a bit in refinement. You hear the engine as you build up the revs, Still, it's a whole lot better than it was in the Amaze. And once you settle into a cruise, it doesn't feel as strained as the Innova. What I love about the Mobilio is this very car-like position that you have when you drive. I mean, I, I know that when people buy an MPV, they feel like sitting up high maybe. But this, I don't know, it just balances it out really nicely. You have great visibility. You feel like you're driving a car, but from a just slightly higher position. Even in terms of the way it behaves around corners, right? Absolutely, I mean, this, you know, it just, the way it tucks itself into corners, the responsive steering, you know, the, the connected to the ground feel, the lack of body roll, it just feels so much like a car would around corners compared to the rest. But, uh, you know, when you're putting it into the comparison, I think, you know, as far as handling goes and the secure feeling that you get from behind the wheel, the Mobilio just outdoes the rest. While Renuka had a mixed bag of experiences up front, I had plenty of reasons to be impressed in the rear seat. Seriously, I mean, going over the broken sections, it's remarkable how well the Mobilio is managing to ride flat. Especially since at lower speeds, you find that it feels a bit stiff. You do feel a little bit of that when you're going over the bigger bumps, but still on the whole, this is the flattest ride here. Apart from that, the compact Mobilio offers a surprising amount of space on the inside. The middle row is a comfortable place to be with plenty of legroom. That gets even better because of the sliding seat. The cabin overall has a nice and airy feel. Well, with the best hands in the business at the wheel, I chose to scope out the second row in the other compact urban MPV. Maruti Suzuki's Ertiga. Karthik, how is the Ertiga on space? I think there's a lot of practicality that it offers. Because of the sliding middle row, you can optimize the amount of room on offer. But on the whole, I have to say the space isn't its biggest trump card here. Yeah, say you had to put people in the third row and you had to give someone comfortable enough space to sit in, would you still be comfortable in the middle row? We've set it up as though we have guests in the third row. So we've left some room in the third row. And then I do have a decent amount of space here, but compared to the others, 
this is just not as spacious uh, even in terms of the width on offer definitely not in terms of Nero yeah and overall the cabin doesn't feel as airy um, or as spacious on the inside as the others do up front Renault car was also dealing with some of the shortcomings of the Ertiga the Ertiga's cabin is just not feeling as premium as the others on the inside and it's not because of the way it looks or feels, I think it's more because of the kind of sounds that are filtering through into this cabin. The engine, you hear it when you rev it hard, yeah it does quiet them down and is not as noisy as the Innova's when you're at cruising speed. And it's not just the engine, the Ertiga's cabin lacks overall insulation and a lot of road noise filters through as well. It's just not feeling as quiet as you want an MPV to. Well, MPVs are supposed to make their passengers feel comfortable and the Ertiga pushes to do that with the softer suspension setup. And sure, if you're in the confines of the city, the softer ride would be nice because it has that cushiness. But on the highway, it just has a lot of rocking motion to it, which isn't really ideal for long distances. And over the rougher stuff, I think over the bumps, the sharper edges, it's feeling a bit firm. But Karthik, I think even at lower speeds, when you put it in this comparison test, it does lose out to the others. You find it crashing through the bumps and potholes like this. Yeah. So I think um, in this comparison, yes, the Ertiga doesn't really match up to the rest as far as ride quality goes. And in the city, the other huge problem is when you slow down for speed breakers or other things, you know, you have to work the gears down and even then when you put your foot down, it takes a while to get breathing and then suddenly after the 2500 RPM mark, there's this spike of power but until then it's like, you know, hang on, I'm sleeping, I'm not going to wake up till I so need to. So for you behind the wheel, again, that's a different reason which will tire you out driving it around. Yeah, absolutely. And nipping in and out of traffic gaps is really not easy. You can't just put your foot down and power out of a situation. It's 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 not the strength. The Ertiga's sudden spike of power and lightweight help it achieve the best roll on accelerations. It just felt that bit quicker in third and fourth gear runs than the Logi. But the turbo lag makes it quite troublesome in the city and it's not just there. Trying to imagine this is the smallest engine of the lot here, a Hebin and a fully loaded Ertiga. Yep. That's going to be a bit of a handful. You know, I'll, I'll have to shift into first almost all the time because it just doesn't have the power and especially when it's fully loaded, it's going to be a huge problem. Well, in Renault's Logi, we were suffering some first world problems. This AC in the Logi, the blower is really quite noisy. You put it on three, you can't hear much else. And I have a grouse with the aircon at the back as well. I mean, you already have it at full blast. There isn't really much of a flow here. What doesn't make too much sound is the engine. This one is by far the most refined of the lot. It's so silent whether you know, you're know you cruising, whether you're ambling or even when you're revving hard, you really don't hear this engine at all. I think the other aspect of this is the overall refinement. This cabin definitely feels the best of the lot in terms of the insulation on offer, whether it's road noise. Uh, it's just feeling so much quieter so much more relaxing because of that when you're uh, cruising on the highway. It really was a pleasant motor at 108 bhp, the most powerful of four cars here and also the quickest accelerating. That's not all. It's really, really drivable. I mean, it's very tractable. Whether you put your foot down hard on the accelerator, whether you use it at path throttle, this engine is happy to bring up a response at any point of time and that makes it very easy to drive in most conditions, be it city, be it an overtaking manoeuvre, be it out on the highway. The Logi just feels comfortable at all times. And the other aspect of the Logi that's really very impressive overall is the ride quality. It has this uh, pliancy at lower speeds, it just feels able to muffle out. Round off the edges, I think, of all the bumps. Yeah, at slow speeds which is something we felt a little bit lacking on the Mobilio. Even other than that, at higher speeds, it feels flat. But overall, this is definitely a very comfortable cabin to be in. Logi seems to be scoring the points, not only in the way it keeps its passengers comfortable, but even from behind the wheel. The Logi steering, I think, is nice. It's responsive, sometimes a bit too quick, but I prefer it this way. 
it turns in exactly where you want it to and you know it's light and easy enough in the city but weighs up well around the corners but even as we may rave on about the drivability of these more often than not the owners will be in the back seat so kartik you know how is it in terms of space in the back seat because i mean you were really raving about the mobilio it doesn't have as much space the knee room as the mobilio and one of the big reasons for that is of course that it has a fixed middle row so you can't slide it back and forth like in the ertiga like in the mobilio like in the innova and and its captain seats so what you got you got but the seat itself uh, nice and supportive good cushioning and overall it does feel nice you have this slightly higher set seat so the view out is very nice so opens up that airiness inside the cabin on the whole the space is decent but along with a quiet cabin and well sorted ride the middle row is an ideal place to spend time in so even though it isn't the most spacious there's ample room on offer the lodgy also excels on another front and that's the boot space the middle row flips forward the third row can be removed or when needed put back in and even with the third row up the space is decent all four cars have plenty of storage on offer in one configuration or the other but some points need to be highlighted for instance the mobilio offers the best space even with all three rows up but the third row only folds down in the ertiga with the third row up luggage space is almost non-existent and even when you fold it down it's not completely flat the innova also offers a bit of space with the third row up but once the seats are flipped up there's plenty of space to store luggage for seating 7 the innova is the best of the four no the seats aren't as supportive as the ertiga but the space is ample even when seating large adults in the front however headroom is a constraint in the third row the ertiga's third row is the most supportive but the knee room will get tight when you have tall passengers in all three rows and in the third row you can only fit two in the lodgy with the flip down seats access to the third row is easy and there's ample space there but the seats are low forcing you into a knees up position getting into the third row of the mobilio is as easy as this just pull one lever seat flips folds forward on its own and you can step right in and as you can see knee room is quite enough even for me but the issue here isn't the space on offer it's the fact that the seat is set quite low so you sit in this knees up position so it isn't an ideal third row for adults for long distances at best you have space for two in the third row and leg room also depends on the size of the passengers in the middle row let's get down to which cabin was the best all these top end variants were making quite an impression the ertiga's dash design is smart but the all beige color scheme is a bit jarring and yes it is the cheapest by far but it also has the least amount of equipment but that should be fixed when the facelift arrives in a couple of months time The Mobilio like the Ertiga is derived from a car so you get pretty much the same dash as the Brio and Amaze but it does offer a great sense of space however the front dash looks too basic and really not up to the mark for the price you pay however this car offers you a reverse camera the Logi won't wow you either the dash is familiar and the glossy effect for the central console is a feature we've seen on the Duster like the Duster the plastics are hard and tough and not as plush as you would expect So the Innova which is the most expensive looks the most premium too. It really outclasses the others on interior look, quality, fit and finish. It also offers you a reverse camera and is the only car here to offer climate control. I think the interiors that really look the most impressive are the Innovas. Not only does the cabin feel spacious and airy, but all of the quality feels top notch on the inside and even the layout of the dash is simple but really nice and easy to the eye. So having covered all the details extensively, let's take a look at what they would do to your wallet before we sum things up. So we are starting our verdict off with a long-standing favorite of ours, Toyota's Innova. The traditional MPV that's been pitted against these new age rivals and has its weaknesses exposed. It's not as city friendly as the others, it's not as relaxed out on the highway, and it is the most expensive car here. That's right, it may be the biggest but it's also the priciest. Well, if you're looking for value for money, then you have to look in the direction of the Ertiga. This is the one that's best priced in the bunch, 
but it also feels a size smaller. But that's not all, its saw point really is its engine that struggles in the city, as well as when you're taking it out on a weekend getaway. So it misses out that uh, versatility. That you want I think of an MTV. that's the word that we're looking for that these cars really need to be easy in the city, you need to be able to take them on your weekend getaways, and I think that's where the Mobilio really shines. Yeah, this one certainly has that MPV flavor in it, it's got the space, it uh, drives like a car, so it's got that urban aspect, right? It's easy to drive. And, uh, There's of course those great dynamics. Yeah, I mean from behind the wheel you can enjoy this. So it's really a great little package for daily duties and of course weekend duties. It has its couple of weaknesses. I of think course. main one being the interiors that really feel lackluster at this price. Yeah, and I think the engine just feels a bit gruff and I think that's really where the, the Logi, Logi has scored. It's got the refinement, but it's also got this edge in terms of performance. performance. I think not only that, Logi comes across as a great all-rounder. Performance, ride and handling package, comfort and space, equipment, interiors. Well, it seems to round them off really well. It might be a bit more expensive than the Mobilio, but... I think once you're behind the wheel or in that back seat, it definitely feels worth it. It's able to cope with the city, it's able to cope with the highway and it really comes across as a great all-rounder that is the versatile MPV that the families of today are looking for, which is why it's our winner.